In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this housewarming party cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. Real quick, if you wanna skip the intro, there are chapters listed below and you can just get right into the video. This week I am doing a housewarming cake for Naima and Naima has been ordering cakes from me for years and she sent me the invitation and she wants the cake to kind of look like the invitation. So I had to come up with something and this is what I came up with. <laughs> so I am starting with two tiers. These are five inch, seven inch tiers and they are iced in buttercream icing and I keep them in the refrigerator. I have videos talking about how I ice cakes and buttercream icing, how I make buttercream icing, how I refrigerate cakes. Just look in the, descri in the description below and a ton of different videos will be referenced down there. And before we start, I just wanna welcome all my new subscribers and I thank all of you who have been here for so long and I'm just I'm still having so much fun doing this and I just love you guys so much. So let's get into the video. To start, I have marshmallow fondant and I am adding some Tylos powder in here. The Tylos powder is just gonna get it to a good consistency. I have some dusty rose and I wanna add some color to the fondant, but I don't wanna mix it the whole way. So I'm just kneading it and then I have a little marbling variation there. I'm gonna rip off a piece. I'm covering a five inch and a seven inch cake. This is about two pounds of fondant. I have my cake just out of the fridge. I'm not going to ruin the icing. Have some piping gel and I'm just getting piping gel and a paintbrush and painting the piping gel all on the outside and then dipping the paintbrush in water and painting the outside so the entire outside is sticky and then wipe the cake board. Set that aside and there's a variation in here now. I still want a little more of a variation. So I have a needle tool and I'm sticking it in there and just wiping it on the fondant and again just fold it in half get a little bit more on there and I just want to get a little more of a color variation in here so just knead it a couple times not too much look now it has like a marbling effect perfect let's roll it out get some cornstarch down and then rolling it out about a quarter of an inch thick any air bubbles I'd like to pop from underneath with my needle tool get my cake the icing is still solid and I think I like the other side better but there's tons of cornstarch there so let me grab a paper towel and just wipe the excess cornstarch I find that when I do this marbling effect I feel like the bottom always looks better <laughs> so laying that on top I have a video showing you how I cover cakes and fondant in full detail and I will link that in the description below for you but just pulling it out to get rid of the wrinkles and smoothing it down with my other hand and then using a fondant smoother to seal it all the way down to the board and cutting the excess off. And I had a little bubble here, so I'm using my needle tool to pull the excess fondant out. You see what I'm doing? And getting rid of that air bubble underneath. And then flattening it down again with the fondant smoother and cut the excess off. And I'm just taking a piece of fondant and smoothing the fondant with the fondant and using my weird little pinch technique, which I go over in my fondant video. Now let's stick that back in the fridge and get the five inch cake. So same thing, paint the outside with the piping gel, and then I'm gonna dip it in water and really smooth out that piping gel. And then I wanna wipe the board so the fondant doesn't stick to it. Set that aside as I roll it out, I'm gonna do the same thing, dip that in the, the needle tool into the coloring and do what I did before. make sure you don't need it too much you want to have a variation and again I like the back side better so I'm gonna wipe it with a paper towel get rid of the cornstarch and let's cover the cake And stick that back in the fridge all right now I printed this out on my edible printer I measured how big I wanted it to be and I have this little tool here which I love and I can cut straight edges I can find that and link it below 
I have videos showing you how I use my edible printer and I will link that below as well. Flip it over, get some piping gel on the back, and I rolled out some really thin pink fondant that I'm going to stick this to. I'm just making sure that I get all the way to the edges. And then I'm putting it down from the middle and letting it go to the side so no air bubbles form underneath. Smoothen my cuts. And let's set this aside. Now I have my cutting board with a piece of non-skid pad underneath, a wet paper towel that I can keep wiping my X-Acto knife, and I have my Dresden tool and a paintbrush and a little bit of water. Now I rolled out some gold fondant and it's pretty thick. It, it's like a quarter of an inch thick. I printed out this little house and I'm using my trace cut and smooth technique, pressing with my Dresden tool to get the line onto the fondant and then use my X-Acto knife to cut it all out. And smoothing my cuts. Every time I cut anything out of fondant, I smooth the cuts. And now I wanna cut the heart out as well, doing the same technique. I'm getting a little bit of water on the back and sticking it to a piece of black fondant that has rolled out pretty thin. I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut an even border the whole way around. I just want a thin black border around the heart and then smoothing my cuts again. Perfect. Now I want to cut out the key. I have fondant rolled out a little thicker than the house was and I print out this little key template. And it's kind of a pain in the butt because the key has all these jagged edges. Make sure you get the inside and I also want to trace the lines and all the inside details as well. Now I want to use my Dresden tool to deepen any of the detail lines that I made before I start to cut it out. I like to cut out the, this little piece first. Trust me, it's so much easier to cut these small pieces out before you cut the entire thing out of fondant. And it's tricky, you see? Like it's not coming out that easily. So I'm like pushing the knife all the way through, turn it over and cut it out and it's gonna look really messy. So once I do that, then I take my Dresden tool and smooth the fondant. So I'm pushing the fondant back down on itself just to smooth the cuts and make it look nice. Now, since this is a th this is a thicker piece of fondant. I'm just doing a shallow cut first. I'm not putting the knife all the way down to the board. And I just want to refine those lines because when I did that, I lost some of the detail in there. Now that I have that shallow cut, I'm using that line as a guide. Stick the knife all the way down to the board and cut the fondant all the way out. This fondant does have Tylos powder. All of my fondant always has Tylos powder mixed in and I always use marshmallow fondant. Beautiful. And as always, it's always uh, dirty and jagged when I cut anything out of fondant. So I'm smoothing my cuts, like I said before, just running my fingers over it, use my tools, push the fondant pieces back down just so it looks nice and pretty. Let's lay that back on top so I could realign it and set that aside. Now I'm gonna do the splatter. I taped some cake box lids to catch the excess splatter. I'm dipping some black American buttercream in the, some water to thin it out a little bit. I don't want it too thin, but I don't want it super thick. So you can see it's not holding peaks, right? So it is pretty thin. Now I have this brush. I will find something similar and link it below. It has these like nylon bristles or whatever they are. This cake is just out of the refrigerator. So what I'm gonna do, dip it in the black. And do you see how I'm just peeling back the bristles and it's giving like a, a nice little splatter effect? I have a video showing how I do like a, a galaxy, a star theme on a cake and I will link that below and I go into further detail on how I do this. So I try not to get too much icing on that brush. And also I'm gonna get the tops of the cake, right? Set that back in the fridge and let's do the same thing for the top tier. So I'm pushing the icing onto the brush with my one hand before I start to splatter it on there. And put that back in the fridge. Now I'm 
rolling out the border. So using my ribbon cutter and cutting two ribbons, using my rulers to straighten the ribbons. And then I want to paint it gold. I have this roll come super gold. I will find it and link it below. And I like to dump a little bit of powder in there and use some lemon extract. And the lemon extract evaporates really fast. So I can paint a couple coats pretty quickly. So I'm just going to do one coat and let it dry. And I'm going to grab the house and do one coat on the house, making sure that I get the edges. And with the key, flip it over, let's do the back first and make sure you get in through that hole as well. So there's one coat on all of these. I'm gonna let them dry and then I will do another coat on all of them. And now I wanna stack the cake. So I have a full stacking tutorial. I will find it and link it below, measuring for my straws and then cutting that marker off and putting the straws in the bottom tier. Make sure it's level and then stack the other tier on top. I totally forgot to put buttercream down and I don't wanna to touch this cake anymore. So this one is not gonna have buttercream underneath it and it's fine because I messed up some of the splatter. And I'm cutting a little piece out to dowel this fondant cake, then fill that hole with some buttercream. And then I'm gonna put that little piece of fondant back on top and smooth it out so you could barely see that. And that is explained in my stacking tutorial. Let's flip the key over and get uh, the first coat on the top of the key. Let that dry a little bit and then do a second coat so it's a nice deep gold. Wiping the cake board because I hate when the cake boards are dirty. Go into the back of the cake and just marking where the back is. I like to use a little, a little bit of piping gel where the, the ribbon is going to meet. And then I like to use Crisco around the rest of the cake. Crisco is really forgiving so I can move this ribbon if I need to. Where it meets in the back, just cut with an X-Acto knife and press the seam together. Do the same thing on the top tier. And I like to take a palette knife and just press that ribbon down just to make sure that it's meeting the top of the cake. Where am I gonna put the house? It looks good there. Get a little bit of water on the back. Or is that piping? No, it's water. And then make sure that's facing front and I wanna press that down and make sure the edges are all the way down. And the same thing for the heart. Putting that in the middle, adorable. Now for the sign. I'm just gonna set that aside for a minute. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put that. Now I'm going to use, I'm gonna make the little handle for the sign, not a handle, but the little hanging part of the sign. So I have this clay gun and I'm squeezing a little bit of black in here. And I have a piping tip and I'm just cutting little holes and widening the holes with my Dresden tool. Now I can thread this little hanger. Is it a hanger? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Through these little holes. You see how I cut that on the angle so it comes to a point and it can fit in there. Perfect, and I'm gonna set that aside and I cut a little piece, uh, a round piece out of gold fondant and I painted it gold. So let's get a little bit of piping gel on the back of this. And I'm gonna center this and wrap that around the cake. And now to put behind that little gold piece, I have a toothpick. That way it's just a little more secure and it's not just gonna fall off of the cake. And now I can wrap this little hanging part around it, get a little piping gel in the middle where it's gonna touch the gold part and a little bit behind the rest of it. So I like to use piping gel because it's clear. I mean, I still try to be neat, but this way you can't see it. Now I'm gonna use my Dresden tool to press that into the little hole. And let's get a little piping gel in the back where the key is. I don't like it that way. Let's turn it this way and set that down. Now let's get the cake back out of the fridge. And oh, look, my nails, my nails match the cake. <laughs> I don't like how the sign looks and I'm being OCD, but I'm using a palette knife because I have piping gel behind everything. And I'm grad like, easily lifting this not easily but carefully that's what i want to say lifting this off to make sure i don't peel any of the fondant away from the cake i don't like this i want to start all over so i printed out another sign the same thing and i let it dry flat i think it's going to look better hanging flat rather than wrapped around the cake i don't know why that annoyed me but it did so i the first time i rolled out that little hanger i used that big disc this time i'm going to use that small disc it's just going to look a lot better with that thinner uh, strip. I just felt the other strip looked a little too big. 
and see how I could push it through and thread it through. So that's what we're gonna do. Get a little piping gel just in the middle. I don't wanna wrap this around the cake. I just feel like it looks better if it's gonna sit straight. And now that little hanger thing broke, so I gotta roll it out again. So I'm using that tiny disc and squeezing it through the clay gun and now I can thread it through the back. And I'm gonna get a little piping gel on the back and stick it down and bring it up over that little hangy button <laughs> and thread it through the other side. And I'm gonna trim off the excess and get a little piping gel behind it and push that down. And it's hanging too much, so I wanna thread it through a little bit more just so the, the string looks tight. And now I feel like this needs a flower. This is a poppy anemone. I think that's how you say it. And I get it on Amazon. I can find it and link it below. And I just have to fix the petals and fix the center. And I think it'll look good here. So I have a straw. I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer and slide it on there and stick it into the cake. And then I want to sink it down into the cake. So I take another straw. Wait, I don't do that yet. <laughs> Hold on, here it is. Push the straw down. And now I can set the flower in there and just get it into place. Now I wanna make some butterflies. So I have a little piece of black fondant, a butterfly cutter. I love these things. I'll find that and link it below. Cut it out and then press the plunger to get the little impression on there. And then I can bend it up and it looks like a little butterfly. Let's stick that on top of the key. Get a little bit of piping gel on the back and sticking it down. Good. And now I rolled out pink fondant and did the same thing with the pink butterfly and did another black one. So I don't know. I was like, oh, I need something. I like the butterflies. And then I don't like that butterfly there. So I lifted it off and used the end of my paintbrush to remove any of that piping gel that was on there. And there's the cake. So there you go. There is the adorable little housewarming cake. As you can see, things don't always go as planned. Sometimes I have ideas in my head and then I'm like, I don't like it and I want to take it apart. And it's such a subtle difference what I did with that sign, but I thought it looked stupid wrapped around the cake. It should look like it was like a sign, like flat sign hanging on the cake. And also if I had to do this again, I would have stacked the cake before I put that black splatter on it because when I lifted the top tier on the cake, then I smudged the little splatters a little bit. But you live and you learn. That's how cake decorating is and now I know for next time. So like I said in the video, there are other tutorials listed in the description below which go into deeper detail of some of the techniques that I used. So I think that's it. <laughs> Why do I always say that? If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And please know I try to answer as many comments as I can. I've said this before, YouTube does not always send me all the notifications to all the comments. So I can only answer comments that I know that people left. So I'm very sorry if I don't answer. I, I really try to answer as many as I can. And you can follow me on social media and check out my website. It's listed in the description below as well. <laughs> and if you wanna stick around, you can watch these two videos next. Am I pointing at them? And hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and remember it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.